Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ronnie Landis and I'm bringing you another segment of this video series called Activating Genius. And today we're going to talk about a concept called myelination. Myelination refers to our myelin sheath, which is the nerve fiber insulation that wraps around our nervous system and protects our nerve fibers um, from oxidation and allows us to conduct electrical circuitry or electrical conductivity through our nervous system, through our spinal cord, and up into the brain. An um, uh, idea I want to bring to you guys is that when we're trying to develop a, t a skill, a talent, an ability, we're trying to develop mastery over these skills, we want to, basically it has to do with myelinating ourselves towards that skill. There's a book called The Talent Code written by Daniel Coyle. And he correlates some of the most talented people all over the world in um, different areas, what he calls talent beds, where, ta where extraordinary amounts of talent are produced in different areas of the world. And he came down to the conclusion that they've actually developed their myelin sheathing to a point that, that expresses a proclivity towards developing that, that skill more and more. So this is an interesting idea, and it has to do a lot with Malcolm Gladwell's theory on 10,000 hours of practice, where if we practice a skill over and over in consistent repetition, and you know it takes somewhere around 10,000 hours of practice to develop mastery over that skill, and I find that to be an interesting idea, and it seems to be a, a pretty good correlation among the most talented people in the world. So today we're going to talk about how to develop the myelin sheath, how to develop a myelin nation, and some of the deterrents that actually break down our nerve fiber insulation and actually create nervous system dysfunction in the body and do not allow us to express our greatest potential in the world. There's two, con or there's two terms I want to put out there. One is called hypomyelination. That's the decreased production of our myelination or our myelin sheath. There's also demyelination, which is the degenerative loss of myelination. Um, in our world today, we're seeing a massive um, epidemic of neurological and nervous system dysfunction. Things like multiple sclerosis, which we're going to talk about, things like cerebral palsy, things like dementia, strokes, um, Alzheimer's, these are all essentially nervous system dysfunctions and degeneration of our myelin. Uh, multiple sclerosis, for example, as I was doing more research and I've done over a period of time, I've come to realize what that is. Basically, multiple sclerosis is a scarring of the myelin sheathing that's surrounding our nerve fibers and our spinal cord, which causes severe oxidation, breaking down that protective mechanism. So when that protective insulation starts to break down, it creates an opening um, essentially for oxygen and other other toxins to get through and starts to break down the transmissions of our, our uh, nerves or our neurons. Um, when, our, when our myelin is damaged, it basically inhibits the electrical transfer of information from neuron to neuron, thus sending out scrambled signals to the brain. So this is really important when we're talking about something called activating genius. We're trying to activate higher faculties of mind and body and we can't do that if the electrical conductivity is being subdued. If it's being, if the messages that we want to send, for example, if we want to send certain signals to our muscles to act, right, we need to be in high nerve functionality. But if those messages are being scrambled, we're going to start to experience degeneration. This is something, this is what happens with multiple sclerosis um, or uh, any of these other nerve dysfunctions is that MS, for example, is when, you know, um, the, it's basically the inability for the brain to send electrical signals to muscles to perform simple tasks. So the simple actions like moving my hand up and down that we take for granted, people that have severe onset of MS, they're, those signals are being scrambled and they're not able to perform those actions. So this, the, jitterney, the jitterness 
uh, starts to take on. You, you see this in a lot of people. Um, so that has to do with nerve function. What we're going to get into right now, just to make it simple for you guys, we're going to talk about a few key nutritional concepts that you can implement immediately to start increasing nerve functionality and actually increasing the growth and development of your myelin sheath. Uh, something I found really interesting, when they did autopsies of Albert Einstein's brain after he passed away, what they found was that he actually had a greater growth development of myelination or a myelin sheath than the average person does. And actually what they're finding out is that when you develop a skill and you do it over repetition of time, that myelin, that myelin sheath starts to increase and grow and develop. And that's what starts to, uh, that's what starts to develop talent. Also, what I want to put out there, because I am a nutritionist, and that is my focus, is that the, the repetition and consistency of a skill is only one end of the equation. If we're not supporting and supplementing our physical apparatus, with the nutrition it needs to perform these skills over long periods of time, we're going to start to break down. You see this with professional athletes like Michael Jordan or Allen Iverson or any great athletes that once they start to get in their older age, they're no longer able to start producing the same physical attributes that they once were. Now, it's not because their muscular has changed really, it's because that myelin has started to break down and de-sheath. And a lot of times with athletes, they're not supporting their body with the nutritional support. So what I want to talk about is actually a few key components that can help increase the longevity of anybody, not just athletes, but actually as it pertains to athletics to increase longevity of performance, but also with longevity of health. Because we know when we develop our neurological capacities, we're able to experience a longer lifespan and we're able to experience a longer quality of life. So let's get into it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is essential fatty acids. Now, I have a few other videos. There's going to be cross-referencing of this information through the different videos that I have. Because it all kind of connects together. It connects the dots. Um, the first thing I want to say is DHA, docohexanoic acid, which is an essential fatty acid for brain development and brain functionality, and specifically also for the eyes, which is ties into our nervous system, but specifically for protecting nerve fiber function. Um, the DHA is largely concentrated in the myelin sheath. So when people uh, start to have uh, essential fatty acid or the polyunsaturated fat DHA, they start to deplete that from the body, it creates nervous system dysfunction. Now let's tie that into magnesium. We're going to talk a lot more about magnesium in a later video, but um, one thing about magnesium is that it, it activates an enzyme in the human body called delta-6 desaturase. And that enzyme is known for being able to successfully convert ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, into EPA, which is a direct precursor for DHA. Now, there's other... There's other, you know, um, cofactors involved with this conversion like vitamin C, vitamin B6, B9, folic acid, um, a number of other things. But magnesium is super powerful and people that have ADHD or ADD have been known to be able to actually um, reverse these conditions by taking a magnesium supplement. I suggest if you're going to go that route, take an angstrom magnesium supplement um, mineral Life has a great one that actually is combined with fulvic acid, which helps drive in the mineral to the to the cell. Um, also, magnesium rich foods. Obviously, people that know me know I love cacao. Cacao is the number one food in the world in magnesium. It's also chlorophyll rich foods. The central molecule in chlorophyll is magnesium. Chlorella is the highest chlorophyll food in the world. It's ten percent chlorophyll. If you want to drive this in further, I would suggest getting on high amounts of chlorophyll. And we're going to talk a little more about that when we talk about detoxification in a later video. Um, the other mineral that I want to talk about briefly is sulfur. Sulfur is an incredible compound for repairing nerve fibers, repairing muscle tissue, repairing... Um, 
really every single uh, every single tissue in our body. It helps to repair and maintain that and, re and maintain elasticity. Now, what I really am into is. MSM, methyl sulfonyl methane, methane, which is a derivative of DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. Um, MSN is really powerful, and we're going to talk a lot more about that in a future video on calcification, breaking down these crust layers that actually attach themselves to our nervous system and inhibit that transmission of information. Um, I want to read a quick segment in my book right there if you can see that the live it lifestyle on sulfur let's find this uh, let's find this chapter or this section here I probably should have had this laid out okay here we go so sulfur the healthy the healthy maintenance of tissue fibers ligaments muscle tendons and joints are heavily reliant on sulfur nervous system conditions such as palsy multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease are due in part by the breakdown of the thin protective material that coats our nerve fibers known as the myelin sheath. Once these layers are edged off our nerve fibers, the nervous system begins to become oxidized from acid producing oils, foods, false sugars, radiation, electromagnetic frequencies, and other known toxins. Sulfur is critical for collagen synthesis, which builds our skin, hair, and nail cells. So we're going to talk about that a little later in a future video. The next thing we want to talk about is, um, again, as it relates to DHA, actually, um, it was found out that breastfed babies have higher IQs than babies that are not breastfed. And a lot of that has to do, if not, you know, the... The bulk of that has to do with the fatty acids that are in a mother's breast milk. And, you know, one idea I want to put out there before we move on is that when animals are born, you know, like a horse, for example, or a goat, there's an interesting thing where that animal, when they're born, after a couple of days, they're able to start getting up and walking. Why is that? It's because they're, pre, they're predisposed to that uh, physical attribute or that that ability they're pre myelinated their circuitry is already myelinated for that where a human baby has to actually you know learn that and go through that in time it takes a longer process well babies that are breastfed actually are able to speed up that process a lot quicker um, so that's really interesting and it's so critical that we get off this whole like soy estrogen milk formula nonsense that's being pushed out there and get on to real breastfed babies critical um, the last part of this as the nutritional component for this video is vitamin b12 now this is really important for us to understand vitamin b12 it contains the largest molecular structure of any known vitamin that's produced in the gut and there's been a lot of like debate and controversy over the years on vitamin B12. Do we really need to take a supplement? Do we need to eat milk and dairy to get our vitamin B12, our methylcobalamin? And I'm not here to answer that question. What I am here to say is that, hey, listen, we probably want to add methylcobalamin into our insurance policy to make sure that we're not going off the deep end when we get onto some kind of diet. Um, because here's the thing about B12, the repercussions of depleting your body of B12 over the years is far more um, detrimental than, you know, being in the guessing game about it. So my advice is that, you know, do your research on this, but it's probably a good idea from time to time to take a methylcobalamin B12 supplement, you know, just to make sure that you are saturating your body with that essential nutrient. B12 is critical for the same as DHA is neurological function for our brain chemistry and our nervous system. And people have been known to have severe nervous system breakdowns from, from not having enough vitamin B12. Let's talk about that for just a second. There's something called the intrinsic factor, which is the reuptake and reabsorption of methylcobalamin in the body, or vitamin B12. And whether that different people have a different ability to reuptake and absorb that better than others. So there's no blanket statement that can be said that oh you just need you know there's the intrinsic factor re, -up, re -up uploads into your body and you don't have to worry about it. 
That's not really true. And the, here are some conditions in our world that most people are facing that drive in this subject even more and actually lead to the, the severe depletion and the inability for the body to reuptake B12. Chlorinated water from our showers. Listen, if you don't become a fill, if you don't get a filter, you're going to be a filter for all the toxins that are that are residing in our municipal water supply. Chlorine, chlorine is one of them. Chlorinated water is like an antibiotic and starts to strip out the microflora or the the bacteria in our our gut, and that's what helps to reabsorb that B12 along with you know so many other things. Um, antibiotics, again, when you're taking an antibiotic and you have like a viral condition or really it's a bacteria condition, it doesn't really do much for viral conditions, but if you have a bacterial infection and you take an antibiotic, you may be short shortcutting your results by depleting the bad bacteria, but what about all the beneficial bacteria? Our body is made mostly of friendly bacteria. We're like a farmhouse for bacteria. So if we're taking like a nuclear antibiotic, it's like a nuclear bomb in our internal terrain, we're wiping out all the beneficial bacteria. And that is very pivotal for vitamin B12 depletion. Um, smoking, excessive alcohol, and excessive animal protein has been shown to actually inhibit um, the, the reabsorption and production of vitamin B12. Go figure. Um, and another thing actually I'll put out there is cooking your food. And I'm not saying it's wrong to cook your food, but if there's a disproportion uh, ratio of cooked food to raw plant food, you're going to experience some issues. One of the things that gets produced in cooked food is something called acrylamides, which destroys important microbes and bacteria in the body. So th that's something just to keep in mind. These are some of the key some of the keys to developing out the myelination th through nutritional components. Again, is magnesium, sulfur, MSM, DHA, docohexanoic acid, um, and vitamin B12. Now, these are not the only things, but we're going to be going through a long list of videos and going through so many different concepts and ideas on how to develop out uh, not just the myelination, but to develop out the nerve functions that increase transmission. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. Leave your comments, questions, and um, we will be seeing you on the next video. And we're going to be talking about mineralization, increasing nerve transmissions through being highly mineralized, through mineralogy. So once again, I hope you got a lot out of this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.